Hi, everybody. It's Stacey Calder from the Business Success Network and Magazine and the Business Success Podcast. If you're watching this live on YouTube, hello. If you are listening to it on a podcast, then you won't be able to see the antics we're getting up to in the online studio today, but you will be able to hear us. So I'm going to introduce quickly what the Business Success Network is. It's a community of... Um, I call them sister communities, actually. We started off with the Business Success Network UK. That rapidly grew. And now we have lots of amazing community leaders. We have eight communities in total. And that is about helping people with tools, tips, techniques to help them grow them, grow their business. Uh, Joe is the community leader for our latest community group, one of our most exciting groups. It's growing rapidly. So it's been set up about a month ago. She told me she wasn't doing any networking meetings or any podcasts or anything until it hit 100 members. And then she hit 100 members very, very quickly uh, and had a bit of a panic, didn't we, Joe? that it was going too no, quick? No, no. <laughs> She's doubled that now. So we're about a month into it. So Joe is being an amazing community leader. So I'm going to hand over to Joe to introduce herself. And then we'll introduce this episode's guest. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Jo O'Neill. I run Bright Cat Business Solutions, which is a marketing virtual assistance and social media company. We help people get visible, mostly online. Um, but I am the community leader for the disabled entrepreneurs version of the Business Success Network because they are my tribe and they are a really engaged tribe and, and love interacting and, and helping each other and I'm so happy how this group is going um, and if you do want to come and join us please do. Um, our guest today is Sarah Arch who I'm going to let her introduce herself and her business. Yes hello thank you Jo. Um, so I'm Sarah Arch, I am the founder and director of Dismantle Initiative, which is a company offering training and consultancy services for businesses that are wanting to tap into the disabled um, talent pool. So, um, yeah, very, very relevant for the network that I have joined. So I am disabled myself um, and chronically ill and neurodivergent so a little bit of everything because why not um and i'm just trying to get word out there to other businesses that if they want to um sort of increase their talent pools then they maybe need to consider being more inclusive and more accessible for disabled people and then giving them the tools in how to do that that's I love, I love that you're not just saying you need this you're then going and this is how <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And I, I, I've kind of, so my background, I've worked with disabled people pretty much my whole life. Um, it's the field that I studied at university. Um, so yeah, I kind of know it inside out as well as having lived experience myself. I've got family members who are either neurodivergent, my brother's profoundly deaf. I've kind of lived and breathed it. Um, and I kind of decided, right, well, I can see there's real gaps. Um, there's lots of data that shows that disabled people are leaving the workforce at twice the rate of non-disabled people. Mm. So there's clearly something going on. Um, and so I took all of my sort of academic study and have put it into something quite different because I want to, we need to stop viewing disability and disabled people as a problem. Or a, oh, we've got we've got we've got to do something about those pesky disabled people. Actually, as I'm sure you know, Joe, we have lots of talents. We have lots of skills. In part, simply because we've had to exist in a world that is not set up for us. So we're going to be good at problem solving. We're going to be good at um, you know showing compassion and empathy because we know how hard life can be. They're the kind of skills that businesses need. But if a business isn't um, sort of doesn't have the awareness, doesn't have the kind of grounding to be able to get the most out of their disabled staff, they're not going to attract them. They're not going to retain them. They're not going to be able to, um, you know, it's their reputation as well. And we know the purple pound is strong. 
businesses want to tap into that as well they're not going to if disabled people are like nah you're not employing disabled people I'm not going to give you my money um so yeah I'm very 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 passionate about it <laughs> do you know Sarah this is I was gonna say I'm I'm just gonna throw this out here because um obviously setting up a group like we have a community where we want to champion we want to support disabled entrepreneurs um, Joe will be really honest and I, I will share. So Joe, K, I've been, let's say, planting the seeds with Joe for probably 18 months now saying, oh, I'd love you to run a, a local business success network in your hometown in, in Nottingham. And Joe was like, all right, all right, let's do yeah, it. Putting me off and putting me off. And then one day she rang me and she said, look, I really like the idea of a community. I don't want to do it locally because if I was to run a coffee morning, Joe, you don't mind me sharing this, do you? I don't mind sharing it all. I just thought I'd better check them. Um, Joe said, look, if I have, if I'm ill or something like that, and I, I'm going to then let me down, or she felt like, and the people that had booked on for the thing. She said, so rather than doing a local BSN, Business Success Network, why don't I, I'd love to set up a, a community for disabled entrepreneurs, which I think she'll tell you, my face kind of turned inside out. I loved it. It was amazing. I'm like, Absolutely. Because I already know that in our UK group, we had some disabled members. However, I also know that I don't class myself as disabled and the outside world wouldn't. So I am saying to Joe with like red lights going, right, we've got to make sure the terminology is right. Is that mm. the right terminology? Joe, you're going to have to lead on this because I, and then it gets your brain thinking, doesn't it? And there must be, and I've talked about it quite a lot in other, you know, before this group community came up. There will be people out there that want to do good. They want to employ, um, you know, people that have creative brains, that have um, disabilities, and they want to get it right. But they're almost so scared to get it wrong that yeah. they've frozen to the spot. And I'll hold my hands up. And I was a bit like that with Joe. I'm like, we <laughs> need to do this but I do not want to get it wrong. And I'll tell you, within the month of us setting up, I've already had grief about how dare I set up a community for disabled entrepreneurs when I am not disabled. So I'm already getting grief. So imagine if we went... And so that would have put a little... Yeah, that was quite, it was definitely, but, but I am. But and luckily for me, mind. I'm a bit of a dig my heels in we can do this it's set up for all the right the right reasons and we need people like you Sarah to say to me do you know what it's okay you've got this do this this is the right steps yeah let's work yeah. together we're good <laughs> and do you know what I think you've done exactly the right thing because there is this thing of you know nothing about us without us which I'm sure Joe you're probably familiar with yeah. and but if you have a platform, which you have, um, why can't you use it to benefit other people? And, and the majority of disabled people, there are lots out there that are doing amazing things and, and doing really well, but it's not easy being a disabled entrepreneur. And if you want to, dis to support disabled entrepreneurs, but you're not disabled yourself, all you can do is then try and facilitate it by including disabled voices and in my opinion you've done the right thing you've used your platform for good um to yeah so we have building. like i said we have members across the uk that will describe themselves as having a disability or whatever we've had sponsors at our business awards who we made sure like you said, we've got a stage with a ramp. And bless him, he was like, oh, I can't believe you've done that for me. And I thought, but that should be normal. Like, you should expect yeah. that and know that. So that's the where I come from, is that we've already got people in our network anyway. How amazing is it that we can now give them a community? Because let's face it, the community, the BSN Disabled Entrepreneurs community is very different conversations to what goes on in the women in business or the UK group because it's so supportive. I mean, we are supportive anyway in the other groups, don't get me wrong, but you guys are so open in there and so honest and the 
threads that you do are really supportive. And I love that. So I love that your business, Sarah, actually helps others to say, yeah. go and look at the talent. Because I've, I mean, there are some fantastic, talented people in that community. Mm. And that's just 200. You know, I, I haven't got stats. You tell me. There must be thousands of people out there with businesses that would and again, it's the thing, isn't it? Is whatever speaking that label is, and I don't like labels. Uh, speaking to Dr. Mark Esho the other day, he told me 25% of all business owners are disabled. And how many of them are doing that business? And some of them will be struggling because the accommodations aren't there for them to get a job and going to work. Yeah, and, and there's so you're right um when you think that 25 percent of the population has a disability of some sort or long-term health condition like it must be around that, that are, but actually i wonder if it's higher because we know that many workplaces aren't accessible and so sometimes that is a driver for you like that was part of the reason i've decided I don't want to keep working for the man anymore I want to do my own thing because then I can do it in a way that suits me and my needs so <laughs> it, it doing your own thing and building your own business is actually quite accessible it's much more accessible than going and trying to work in a normal job where you've then got to ask for reasonable adjustments you've then got to kind of see if you can get some other accommodations through access to work access to work is not in and of itself it particularly accessible if you've got any sort of like processing needs because it's all wordy documents and time consuming and all of that so every single part of working in a you know a more standard job comes with barriers whereas when you do it on your own you you can just do what suits you and suits your needs best so to me it makes sense that there's lots of disabled entrepreneurs out there because it's just easier than yeah, going absolutely. to an office well i think it's fantastic that you've created an organization where you can look at those barriers you can look at your own experiences you can help um you know, almost both sides of the, you know, you can help the employer to understand what they need to do, but also the employee or that to set you or the entrepreneur, the business owner um, to kind of understand what they can ask for, what they can't, um, their needs. You know, it's really important that their needs are met, isn't it? So I love the fact that you've built a business. And, and like you said, you've got such experience with that through yourself, through your family you know, ex, um, I'm guessing ex-employers experiences, all those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, good on you. That is amazing. So yeah. then we've talked about kind of your background and things like that. What does, and we ask this question to everybody because it gives us such great answers and there's never a right or wrong. What does business success look like to you then? It's a very interesting question and I almost kind of have two hats on when I answer this. So my first hat of in terms of other businesses and being successful, having a diverse workforce, having a workforce that uh, reflects your local community or your kind of the country that you work within. So that includes disabled people um, and having like a really um, empathetic and compassionate approach to your employees mm -hmm. is only ever going to make your business more successful. When I then think of my own business and what what that success looks like for me, I think just if I if I have helped change the way each company that I work with views disability, then I've been successful. If I've helped them to kind of uh, explore their own kind of views of disability and unpick that unconscious bias, then I've been mm. successful. I've done what I've set out to do. Um, so, yeah, kind of looking at it from two different perspectives there. <laughs> 
That's. But I guess ultimately, it's uh, it's money in the bank, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what though? I think I've asked that question now. I think we've done two, two maybe three uh, big, long like podcast series. We've done some mini series. We ask that all the time, and I don't think ever anyone ever says, hey, "Where's the money?" Right? You know, it's almost a secondary kind of like you just said. Oh, oh, and we need money in the bank, yeah. but it's never ever about the money. There's always yeah. what that money can do, what it brings. Yeah. The way you work, yeah, I, I, I do love that question because we get some great answers, don't we, Joe? Yeah. yeah, it's fabulous. And it's like, yeah, we all need to pay our bills, but but what? Why? Why are you doing something you love? Well, exactly, exactly. And I think it's always that thing of if you love what you do, then it's not work, is it? And you know, there's all jobs, all even running a business comes with things that you know you maybe don't like. I. I'm not a fan of admin. Faffing around with stuff where I'm making, you know, posts for social media, slides for presentations, things like that. I'm in my element. I love all of that. Sitting down and doing my day to day, you know, accounting and bookkeeping and stuff like that. Oh, it's, it's not fun. But you have to do those things that you don't like to make your business successful. But if the majority of the time you're doing stuff that actually you love mm. and you're passionate about, then it's not work. It's not hard work then, is it? It's easy. And if you can, you know, earn enough money to pay your bills doing something that you love, then why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. OK, then. So do you have a vision for the future of where you want to take your business? What your plan is? Well, I am still very much in the early phases. I literally only registered my business with a uh, company's house in September. So it is still very much in the startup phases. But eventually what I would love is to develop it to the point where I'm going around the whole nation improving people's attitudes towards disability that has the knock-on effect then that you're improving disabled people's lives because they can go and get jobs and work in a way that suits them better. Um, and just, yeah, I kind of, I have big dreams of changing the world to make it better for disabled people. But, you know, you've got to temper it with a little bit of reality there that it's going to be a long, hard slog before I can get to change the world. Um, but yeah, if I can change one company at a time to make, to change the culture, um, to create, you know, that psychological safety for disabled employees, then I'm happy. Yeah, take one step at a time and head towards that big dream. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's going to be a long, hard slog in many ways. But as I say, I love it. So it's not going to be, although it's going to be a lot of work, it's never going to be hard because I just love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. And I love the fact that you've said you're, still in you know you're very much in startup mode you're under kind of three years old so you're still in that it's almost like a honeymoon period isn't it where you love your business and every it doesn't even when you have a bad day it's it's still great and and there's so many there's so much opportunity and there's so many different paths you could take you know that end goal is there but you never quite know or you're going to go down one way and you never quite know whether you're going to go left or right or yeah. you know whether it's gonna that's gonna lead on to something else because when I was looking you know when I started my business 15 years ago I was like right I know where I'm going this is my end goal uh, yeah it's not is it because you're like <laughs> you know there's this whole weave of different paths and turns and things change and life gets in the way and then all these kinds of things but it's great it's great to have a goal and I'm very big picture so I'm with you I you know like you said it's going to be there's it's about the journey, isn't it? It's not the destination. Yeah. I know that sounds cheesy, but if you can enjoy the journey to get you to that destination, to get you to your own business success, whatever it is, then that's real. It's fun. It's creative. It's yeah. It's a great journey. So I Definitely. love the fact that you're in startup. I can't wait to see what you do. Um, yeah. I definitely <laughs> I definitely think there's going to be more conversations with us because, like you say, I am someone who doesn't want to put my foot in it, who quite often just needs to zip it. 
<laughs> and, and learn from the experts. So the thing is, I think I don't know about you, Joe, but like I, I completely get the fear that everybody and everybody does have it around saying the wrong thing when it comes to disabled people, and. I have definitely made mistakes in the past where I've used the wrong terminology because we're all learning. And mm. when you compare it to, because I, I feel like the journey of disability inclusion and talking about disability is still kind of in its infancy. When you compare it to like the discussions around race that we have, mm. a lot of the words and terminology that was used even 50 years ago, now everyone's like, oh, no, you don't oh, yeah. say that word and you don't say that word. And everyone's kind of more confident. They still have that little um, kind of bead of anxiety inside, like, oh, my goodness, am I going to offend someone when you're not of the same race as the other person? But we have, you know, most people nowadays know certain words that you don't use. Whereas disability, we're still probably 20, 30 years down the line from mm. where we are with race. So we still have people who use um, slurs, ableist slurs. So the R word and things like that. And, you know, I've got teenage um, boys and one of them came home from school the other day and said an ableist slur. And I went. I kind of flipped out a little bit and was like absolutely not you do not use that word in my house under any circumstances and this is why and at first he was like but mum everyone says that you know I don't mean it like that and I'm like I don't care how you mean it yeah. the context of that word and the history of that word is disgusting and your uncle has had it said to him as a slur. Your brother has had it said to him as a slur. I do not want to ever hear that come out of your mouth. So we're still in that, in my opinion, educational stage. Mm. But so everyone's going to make mistakes. Everyone's going to fluff it sometimes. But so long as you're willing to learn and grow, it's all right. No one's going to, you know, you're not hopefully you wouldn't get cancelled from it if you give a genuine you know apology and all of that and say I recognize that I said something that is not okay I've learned from it thank you to whoever it is who's taught you about it and move on and and just keep you know we're humans we all have to learn and grow yeah and I think a lot a lot of the problem stems from there's so much ableist language that's microaggressions still and it'll yes. take time for that to filter out. Yes, absolutely. And that's kind of what I've embedded in, in my training is to try and change the culture around how we, not only how we view disability, but how we talk about disability to try and get rid of those, you know, microaggressions in language. But I mean, those microaggressions happen. I have this thing about um, anyone who knows me well knows that I talk about carpets and ramps and I get really really cross about it because it's something that absolutely no one should be making mistakes with but they are yeah. they're still happening you get ramps that are you know they they meet regulatory standards but when a wheelchair user tries to self-propel up or down it they can't do it so it's not actually fit for purpose at all. And it's, in my opinion, ableism that is making those mistakes come out because people have not understood what it means to be a wheelchair user. And like with carpets, if you have a carpet where the pattern is really busy and it can cause visual disturbances for anyone who has sensory processing differences, visual stress, low vision, migraines, anything like that. And places are still doing it. I go into places and I see carpets that are virtually new and they're just hideous. And you're like, it looks ugly for one thing. <laughs> but the, um, you know, the added context is that they haven't thought about disabled people and their needs. And that is because of ableism, because they just forget disabled people exist, despite the fact we're the largest minority group. 
<laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, but yeah. It, it's eye-opening listening to you guys and doing this podcast and, and having this great community. Um, we would, you know, me and Joe have talked about spoons quite a lot because I was like, what is this spoons thing? Um, if you haven't heard of spoons or you want to know what it is, you need to get yourself into the community because Joe's got a really good explanation in there about it. It's fantastic. But I used it the other day, you know, I was chatting to a guy who struggles with their mental health and he'd sent me a voice note. Uh, sorry, he sent me a text and I said, look, don't worry, go and do whatever you've got to do. And he'd said on, the, oh, I'll voice note you later. I said, don't worry about voice noting me. That might take up too many spoons. Just, you know, and I was thinking this is, I'm learning. You know, I would never have used spoons. I'd have said, oh, don't worry, go and have a nap, go and chill out, message me when you're ready or whatever. You know, I would not have used that terminology. So it is great that you learn, you pick it up and you use it. Um, yeah, I find it, I find it fascinating and I think as I said earlier the world needs more people like you that can almost be that go-between and say mm. look you want to do it because like I said there are people out there that want to do it yeah but are just almost shell-shocked into we don't even know where to start and we'll come to your contact details right at the end but before we do that I'd love a top tip from you so this could be life it could be business it could be for an employer it could be for a disabled entrepreneur, whatever you want, hit us with your top tip. Um, so I have quite, a, I have a few, but in terms of a top tip for accessibility, change all of your white documents to cream because cream is universally more accessible than white when you and if you ever want to experiment with this change like say you're reading something off a word document or something like that change it to cream read for a while and then quickly switch to something where it's white and you will everyone notices the difference and they go oh wow because of the glare and everything like that so that's a very quick mm. fix for accessibility uh, in terms of being a disabled entrepreneur, build your network. Build your network so you do not feel like you are doing it on your own because it can be lonely. Um, I'm really lucky. I say lucky. Is it lucky? I don't know. My husband's also been building his own business alongside mine. And so we've been able to share experiences, share skills, all of that. Um, and I can't, I can't express enough how valuable that has been, even though it's been a little bit, um, full on as us as a family and a home, uh, but we're both kind of competing priorities and things like that. It's been really, it's been a wonderful experience to do it with someone that I love. So yeah, build your network. I do love that. And obviously as a community leader, um, I think that's definitely a top tip that we always say, you know, it's not, it's, it's not us, it's an old, old saying, isn't it? It's not what you know, it's who you know. I do think it's a combination of both. If you yep. build a great network, you will always know someone. And if they don't know the answer, then they will know someone that will, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. And that's what I've been finding is <laughs> exactly that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And find those people who are going to lift you up and not drag you down as well. Yes, Ooh. absolutely. Ooh. Sorry, I literally went to grab my um, glass of water and I've just built it. I'm dyspraxic, so thankfully <laughs> 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 it's not on the computer, it's just on my papers. I was going to say, are you now swimming in water? Thankfully not too much, it was only this half. Is... I'm we're going to see another skill of Sarah's here now. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do then, Sarah, is... Like we said a minute ago, people, are, they're going to hear this. They're going to want, they, you are going to be like hot property now. They are going to want to know where to get hold of you and how they can, you know, get you supporting them. So website, social media, what's best? Where can they find you? Um, so LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn as Sarah Arch um, and Sarah Arch Dismantle Initiative. That is probably the first put, good place to start. My website is coming, but not yet. Hopefully that will come in the next few weeks. 
but if not, email. It's just sarah.arch at dismantleinitiative.com. Do check the spelling of initiative. I always get my put in either too many I's or too many T's or not enough. So just check your spelling. But yeah, email or LinkedIn is probably the best way. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been, real, it's been a real pleasure. Joe. I think it's definitely, Sarah's been a great guest to have and, and a brilliant part of the community. There's I definitely more about. stuff we can be doing in there. It's just fantastic. There is, yeah. I mean, thank you for joining us. It, it's been really interesting. I could talk to you for hours. Um, and if anybody would like to join us in the Facebook group, search for the Business Success Community uh, for Disabled Entrepreneurs and you will find us and be very welcome. Brilliant. Thank we'll you so really much. Up. We will, um, yeah, I can't wait for this to go live. I can't wait for people to connect with you. Uh, do drop your comments if you're watching this on YouTube and we'll make sure we drop everybody's links in as well so that you've got easy um, accessibility to these uh, ladies because they are phenomenal. Right, that's it. It's another podcast episode over. If you're looking for support, do go to businesssuccessnetwork.co.uk. You'll be able to find us, you'll be able to find the communities and have access to all the fantastic members that are in the Disabled Entrepreneurs Group as well, because it's great, as Sarah said, to go over there, network and connect. Thank you for joining me. We did it. 30 minutes of top tips and conversation. Speak to you all soon. Thank you.